Hello and welcome to another edition of Chemo Toaster Video Magazine. I'm your host Jake Vickers. In this edition of the magazine uh, we're going to cover something that's not quite Chemo Toaster related but it is extremely beneficial at least in my opinion to a Chemo Toaster install or a server install in general. I worked on a server earlier in the week that was having some kernel issues and uh, it would lock up and have kernel panics and when you're not physically in front of the machine that can be pretty bad because uh, pretty much the only way to get out of a kernel panic when the machine's locked up and displaying diagnostic information on the screen is by physically rebooting the machine. Obviously I'm in a different country than the server I was working on so having physical access to the machine was not something I could do. I had to constantly get the guy that uh, was in the data center to go over and reboot the machine until I figured out why it was having the kernel panics. And diagnosing kernel panics is a, a rather advanced topic and that's uh, something we're not going to cover here. But I am going to show you a little bit of a tip that will uh, hopefully make it a lot easier for you if you do have a kernel panic. Um, this is something I do in my QMT ISO. Uh, in the ISO I do set this during the installation for you so that if there is a kernel panic basically what happens is the machine will display the diagnostic information on the screen for about 10 seconds and then it'll perform a reboot. The advantages to that are is obviously you do not need physical access to the machine to go and reboot it uh, and you can still view the diagnostic information that happens to be on the screen. Once the 10 second timer has uh, expired, you it, the machine will automatically reboot itself and come back up. And hopefully if the kernel panic issue isn't too bad, uh, the machine will boot up and still run for a little bit, at least give you a chance to get logged in and start doing some investigation. The machine I worked on would just randomly kernel panic, uh, ended up being a bad stick of memory to be honest. Uh, so it was something hard, kind of hard to troubleshoot. It would work fine for a while, then it would just lock up and it became real annoying and that's why the uh, client got in contact with me uh, but I did set this up in their server as well once we did get the memory swapped out uh, so that in the future if they do have the issue there is a kernel panic um, the machine will reboot and it'll send them an email because uh, they're using monitoring software to let them know that it's rebooted so at least they know something's going on but the machine will reboot and come back up and hopefully it'll still work for a little bit, depending, like I said, depending on what the kernel panic issue is. So they can still function, uh, but they get the email alert from their learning software, and they know that, hey, I have something wrong. My server did reboot. It seems to be working, but we need to get in and look at this in a, you know, real short time. Uh, so this is uh, actually going to be a real quick, uh, excuse me, a real quick one. Um, all we got to do is we got to log into the server. Let me get on the right window here. There we go, that's a little bit better. And now, this is the machine that, uh, this is the Cumul Toaster video machine that I've been using in the previous videos. Uh, this was installed uh, manually. A um, quicker way to do it is with the ISO, which is available at iso.cumultoaster.com. Uh, that's a uh, CD you can download. There's a free version, and then there's one that I charge for the download uh, to help recoup some of the costs of bandwidth and promote the project a little bit. Uh, but basically it'll give you a CentOS install with Cumul Toaster installed in roughly, um, I'd say, on a VMware image, I have it up and running in about 15 minutes. Uh, that'll save you quite a bit of time. The Cumul Toaster project in general does make installing Cumul on uh, your system a lot faster. You will be up and running in probably 30 minutes to an hour, uh, but the ISO just uh, streamlines it and makes it easier for you. Just throw the CD in, turn it on, and 15 minutes later, poof, you have a, a working mail system. Uh, with just some minor configuration changes you need to make. Anyway, now that we're logged into here, let's go ahead and let's, uh, well, let's say change our file, uh, add a configuration setting so that we can get the kernel to uh, reboot after a kernel panic. And to do this, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to edit one file, slash, uh, slash etsy, slash sysctl.conf. Now this is on a CentOS machine, and this should work for most of your Linux distros. Uh, double check your distro may put this file in a different location um, but in CentOS uh, it's in your Etsy directory and there's a lot of configuration things in here you could change I really recommend you don't 
um, all we do is we just come down to the bottom and we're going to add a comment And then we just add kernel dot panic equals 10. Uh, and that's real simple. Uh, now the kernel will reboot after a 10 second pause if there's a kernel panic. And you can change that value of 10. You can change it to anything you want. You can change it to 2, 60, 30, however long you want it to pause. And that number is in seconds. It must be a whole number. Uh, you can't do any fractions or decimals. Um, if you want it to stay the diagnostic information to stay on the screen for say 60 seconds before it reboots you would change the 10 to a 60. Do what you see fit. And we'll go ahead and we'll save and we'll exit out of there. Uh, and that is pretty much it. Uh, we're pretty much done with that. Um, I, well, whenever I've done this I've always done some updates uh, that included a kernel update so I've always rebooted after this. Um, but uh, that should pretty much cover it. Uh, reboot may be in order. And uh, that's going to conclude this video. We look forward to seeing you next week.